DC over the hiring and then firing of former RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel is not over. Politico reported first that the current Republican National Committee is weighing whether to restrict NBC's access following its decision to drop the former chair. This would be an unprecedented move, elevating already tense relations between Trump's campaign and the mainstream media. A spokeswoman for Trump's campaign was quoted as saying, our priority is making sure this is a world-class event that allows President Trump to feature his message and vision in a fair way. This is the biggest stage for the main parties. And if NBC is cut out, it could have ripple effects at other outlets. So what do you make of all of this, Amber? Uh, gosh, I have a lot of feelings about this. Um, I am not a fan of Ronna McDaniel. I wrote a profile of her back in The Spectators, uh, I believe it was a September magazine about her tenure at the RNC. Uh, but I do think that NBC was wrong to hire her and then fire her at the behest of some of their anchors. Um, I don't think that it was any different for them to bring Ronna McDaniel on as it was for them to bring Jen Psaki or Simone Sanders or other members of the Biden administration. Um, the idea that they're somehow different because I guess they're Democrats, I don't know. It was bizarre to me. Um, but that all being said, the RNC deciding now to limit access to NBC doesn't make much sense to me because a couple of years ago, I was denied press credentials for an RNC winter meeting um, because of basically a story I had run a long time ago. But they have always provided access to a lot of outlets that I don't think cover them fairly and I think you know, have a bias in terms of the stories that they choose to cover and the way that they cover Republicans. But with the, the whole Rana thing being the impetus for them to now decide to get rid of NBC from the convention just seems like too little too late almost. And why now? Why is this really the catalyst for you now deciding that you don't want to play ball with the mainstream corporate media? Um, it's sort of a reap what you sow situation. Like Rana was the person who decided that she thought she was going to get a fair shake over at NBC and she wanted to collect their $300,000 that they were throwing her. And she probably should have known better that given the reception that some other former Trump supporters have received on net networks like NBC and CNN, that it probably wasn't going to work out super well for her. And so then to sort of retroactively cry and say, oh my gosh, they treated me so unfairly just strikes me as like pretty out of touch. Like, how did you not know that something like this was probably going to happen? Um, it's just, again, for the RNC to use this as the reason why they don't want uh, NBC at the convention, especially after Ronna McDaniel left them with a horrible financial situation, basically destroyed the integrity of the RNC. They're having to do this major cleanup job. I just don't feel like anyone is a hero in this situation. <laughs> Yeah, that absolutely sounds right to me. You have Donald Trump tweeting things like, oh, Ronna Romney, which is a hilarious nickname, because I think that it's a trend. It's a clear trend. We see it with Jen Psaki, who you mentioned. You, you see all of these people who go in and out from the leadership of a political party, which is a machine in itself, in and out of the mainstream media. That's really concerning for me. It explains why we have such biased media coverage and unwillingness to criticize both parties from mainstream news. We just had Joe Lieberman die, who is a well-known centrist, and a lot of the coverage was very favorable. And of course, there's this thing that happens when someone passes away, if they were a not so good person, you kind of remember who they were at their essence. You don't want to say bad things about them, but to be very real, about our political mistakes as a country is necessary to move forward and not repeat the same foreign policy failures that, quite frankly, Joe Lieberman was at the center of. He was someone who authorized the president to use force in Iraq in 2002. He was spreading the lies about weapons of mass destruction. And when we don't have this criticism of the, the darlings of the uniparty in America, it's, it's bad for the American people. It's not real free press when the same people telling the story politically are the ones writing the story politically. And so that's my main problem with all of this. I don't think Ronna McDaniel should be in media, but I don't think really anyone who is the leadership for either party has a place 
talking about politics into a camera, into a microphone for the American people, you have a bias that I think in it, it gives you an incentive to not tell the truth. So that's my main problem there. But, you know, when you have people that are regular anchors also complaining about Ronna McDaniel that have their own clear ties to the political parties, it just falls on deaf ears for me. There's this classic revolving door between government and the media that is incredibly distasteful. It definitely is a shot at the integrity of the entire idea of an objective media, which I don't think we have anymore in this country by any stretch of the imagination. And it's, you know, it's not just people like Ronna Medina. As I said, George Stephanopoulos, who was supposedly a straight news anchor at ABC, worked under Obama. I mean, uh, uh, who's the guy at CNN? Jim Shuto worked in uh, the State Department under President Obama and is now supposedly a straight news anchor there. I mean, it's obviously a joke um, that the media is, by any semblance of the imagination, these sort of independent observers who are supposed to hold the government accountable. Um, journalism now, for a lot of people, is just about access. And they will change their coverage. They will tamp down their coverage because they want to make sure that they're going to be able to get press credentials for whatever the next big thing is. And that's exactly what's happening. Uh, what's probably going to happen here with our, the RNC and NBC is NBC is probably going to make a call and they're going to work it out and everything's going to be fine. But it's so it's such a uniparty thing that they want to have it both ways. Um, and I'm talking about Republicans and Democrats here, because a lot of Republicans complain constantly about the unfair news coverage that they get from corporate media, and then they want to give them scoops, give them interviews, play ball. They want to have their write-ups about their big things that they're doing on Capitol Hill or things about their campaign that look favorable. And so they, they sit here and they give access to all these people, and then they complain when inevitably uh, the corporate media, which just based on political donations and party registration is very liberal, doesn't treat them like an independent or conservative would. And then on the other side, you have Democrats who um, you know, have, I, I would argue, a more favorable media because they do have a liberal bias on their behalf. But then when the media does actually do something objective and right, they get angry and they try to go after them. I mean, the Biden campaign recently was having meetings with the media at his headquarters in Delaware, complaining that they were covering the economy in a way that did not make the Biden administration look good because they were talking about the concerns of Americans about inflation. And these media outlets went up there and sort of lapped it all up and like got their whipping from the Biden campaign. The only outlet that apparently this meeting did not go well with was the New York Times, which pushed back and basically said, you don't get to tell us how to cover issues. That's not your role as a government official. And so there's just this total breakdown in boundaries between the government and the media. And it contributes greatly to the decline in trust in both of those institutions and makes it very clear that a significant portion of the corporate media cannot be trusted by the American people and their right to only have you know 20 percent of people, if not less now, say that they have trust in the media because a lot of them are, are trading access, trading favors, trading good coverage for uh, being able to get into the next event, being able to get their credential approved. And it's just this like, sloppy, incestuous love fest between the people that they're supposed to be holding accountable and supposed to be covering fairly. Um, and it just everything about it disturbs me. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, I when I left graduate school, studied public policy, didn't think anyone was really making good policy in the country. So I took a job, the lowest job you can get on a political campaign, had no experience. I just liked Bernie Sanders. I thought he cared about working people. He didn't seem like a politician. I, I still like the guy. I remember we did an event in Orient, Iowa, which is a tiny town. And it's where the Henry Wallace Farm Center is. And Henry Wallace has a very rich history in farming and really standing up for working people's rights. And so Bernie was gonna go there and talk about an economic bill of rights. So I knocked every single door in the town in the week before and left flyers, you know, Bernie's coming. He also planned to go to the Iowa State Fair the next day. Now we held this event, it was pouring rain. I didn't think people were gonna show up, but the building was packed. Like 150 people came there to hear Bernie speak. And I remember the advance team saying, well, well, Bernie's got to eat lunch at some point. Are there any restaurants in town? 
it's a tiny town. I was like, there's a small Mexican restaurant and a small diner. Neither of menus online. You'd have to go and wait. And they're like, no, we got to get to the state fair. They go to the state fair. Bernie goes and gives a speech there. But the first thing he did was just grabbed fair food because he was hungry. The New York Times writes this story that Bernie is so out of touch with people. He gets to the state fair, doesn't talk to anyone, ignores people trying to talk to him and just goes and gets a hot dog. He doesn't care about engaging with people. Mind you, he sacrificed having lunch at a reasonable hour to talk to people in a town no other politicians went to. But that's the story media, the media covered because that's the story the New York Times wanted to tell about Senator Bernie Sanders. You also had the DNC a week before the election taking away the campaign's access to their portal where they can talk to their supporters and volunteers and remind them to caucus. So it's, it's very deliberate. The stories they want to tell and the candidates they pick and choose they're on the same team, and it's kind of them versus everybody else. Yeah, actually, uh, another person who uh, kicked people out of their events, Nikki Haley, um, actually barred the spectator from her events in the New Hampshire primary because we had covered the allegations about her having an affair on her husband. And so when we showed up to these New Hampshire events, she actually had staffers come and remove us um, because she didn't like our coverage. So unfortunately, this is par for the course. Again, they say they want an objective media, but if you cover them negatively, they just remove access. And a lot of journalists will go along with that and soften their coverage for the sake of continuing to be able to attend these events. And one final correction before we go, George Stephanopoulos was under Clinton, not Obama. So just wanted to clarify that. We'll be back with more Rising after this.